All right, so some of you guys may already be familiar with the Big PMU emulator. Uh, Rich Whitehouse, who created the Big PMU emulator, uh, recently released version 1.05, which now has Jaguar CD support. So for today's video, we're going to be reviewing every single Jaguar CD, including some prototypes here. So let's go ahead and get into this. Before we do, however, you'll notice that I have a few copies of Iron Soldier 2 and World Tour Racing. The reason for this is because there are two file formats that this emulator supports, that's CDI and Q files. But we'll talk more about that later. First, we're going to take a look at Baldi's, which isn't a really d demanding game at all. That's not a very large file either. Let's go ahead and take a look at the introduction and see uh, how it holds up in the emulator. I figure we might as well start easy, and what better way to do it than Baldi's? I really happen to love what they did with the introduction on here. Um, and I realize love is such a strong word, but I appreciate the stop motion and uh, claymation. Uh, this is kind of a brief glimpse into the FMV support, or the uh, Sin Play support that the Jaguar CD has. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a big fan of this game specifically, and I'm not really a big fan of top-down simulators like this or uh, Lemmings or SimCity. And although I have played SimCity and SimCity 2000, they're just not my forte. Um, but for those who like it, you know, this will run just fine on Big PMU. Now I am noticing some audio skipping uh, within the emulator. I am using a low-cost uh, screen recorder for this because typically screen recorders are very demanding. Now I am also running this on real Atari VCS hardware. I'm using an ADATA Pro. Uh, external hard drive that is supporting Windows 10. So my transfer my transfer speeds could be somewhat better, but regardless, it's running just fine. This is only experienced when running uh, cinematics such as this, but it's very hard to notice unless you're really, really paying attention. So let's go ahead and get into the gameplay here. We're also going to notice here that uh, I have three options, new game, enter password, and load game. We're going to go ahead and create a new game, and we have our first glitch. Okay, uh, let's see, can I go back? No. No, I can't. Okay, fine. So let's take a look. Okay, level 2 is not unlocked. Uh, can't do that either. Alright. Alright, let's go ahead and hit play. Now again, I, I have to stress that I'm not particularly a fan of these games. I own every Atari Jaguar CD game available, uh, which is kind of part of my ego when it comes to my Jaguar collection. Let's go ahead and mess around with these guys, see what we can do, just to kind of get a little bit of gameplay footage. I'm gonna drop a few of them in the water just for giggles. Why not, right? Bloop. There we go. I want to give a big shout out real quick to Rich Whitehouse, by the way, for creating this emulator. If not for him, we would not be able to play these games the way that we're able to play them now. Um, it is to my understanding that this emulator is designed around low cost uh, or low specification hardware. So they should run just fine on a very basic Windows computer, very basic Windows tablet, uh, and including your Atari VCS as well. Ultimately, on my end, that is. Ultimately, on my end, I had problems with my VCS, so I also want to give another shout-out to John Perez for helping me troubleshoot my issues with my Windows PC side, and helping me find the necessary drivers to actually uh, have my PC mode running the way that it should be. So, thank you so much for all your help. This video would not be possible without the help of both Rich and John Perez. But anyway, so let's go ahead and load some more software. Uh... We're gonna go ahead and go straight to Battle Morph, and there it is. Okay, cool. Now, Battle Morph is everything that Cyber Morph should have been. God, I love this intro so much. So far, we're doing pretty solid. No audio skipping. That's great. Let's uh, look and listen closely to the cinematics here. here. Battle cruiser Sutherland. All other federal battle cruisers have been lost after investigating permission activity in the Persia Star Cluster. Our 
mission is to find and destroy the permission homeworlds before they start another war of conquest. Test runs on the War Griffon infiltration fighter are complete. Delivery system is successful. Welcome to start a new game. Enter a name. Hmm. Alright, I'm immature, so let's go with, uh, good old Dickhole McGee. <laughs> oh my god, I'm still in fourth grade. Some of my favorite gamer tags was, uh, Anita Finger, Hugh Janus, uh, Phil McCracken, you know, the classics. Zephyr Cluster, Class Evil. Just messing around a little bit, seeing if it'll crack. crack. Welcome to the briefing room. Be careful out there. I feel like I have to mention that some of the audio skipping is also the result of me taxing my CPU. So, Big PMU takes up about 60% of power on your Atari VCS's CPU, and the screen recorder that I'm using is taking about 20%. Stand by. Three, two. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of CPU to really do what I need to do for other things. So I can't run anything else in the background, I can't open up any other software. This is exactly what I get. But, I've been able to maximize performance on my Atari VCS, again, again, thanks to installing the necessary drivers. I'll include a link below if you don't already have these drivers included on your Atari VCS's PC mode. To be completely fair, if you're using emulation, you shouldn't have a lot of programs running in the background anyways. And again, my screen recorder is taking up roughly 20%, if not a little bit more, of my CPU's uh, power. And that comes with any screen recorder, which most of them take up 40-50% to 50 on average. So I actually am doing pretty good uh, with RecForce. Um, if anybody wants a link to that, I'll also include that in the description below as well. well if you're not really doing what I'm doing, then you should be just fine running this on your Atari VCS without any problems whatsoever. Right now I'm trying to get the most out of this game by getting as many things moving on the screen as possible. I don't know if Battle Morph is going to be the best example, but Battle Morph definitely takes a lot to run um, for the Atari Jaguar CD. This is a pretty solid game. Again, this is, this is everything that Cyber Morph should have been uh, when Cyber Morph released. And I love Cyber Morph. I don't care that people hate it or people have jokes about it. I think Cyber Morph it is a very underappreciated game, and I've beaten it at least four times. So if you haven't already picked it up, I recommend it. Now let's go ahead and check out another game here. We're going to skip Beepers for now, uh, and we're going to move on to Blue Lightning. Which, by the way, little fun fact, Blue Lightning originally was for the Atari Lynx, and this is either a direct sequel or a remake of that game. South Africa, Europe, South America, North America, somewhere, North America, somewhere in the Pacific. Let's go ahead and South pick Europe, Europe because everyone knows Europe needs a little bit of love. Can I just say for a brief moment here that I am absolutely in love with these primitive 3D graphics? There's something about them that I really appreciate, and it's part of the reason why I like the Philips CDI, the 3DO, and the Atari Jaguar. I I can't get enough of of outdated 3D uh, video game graphics. It's really interesting seeing where they started from and where they've ended up. So it's it's very easy for me to appreciate them, and that may not be for everybody. And I realize my opinions may be biased, but look at that! That is awesome! Just that, I'm sorry, I, I, I love it. I love it too much. One of the cool things about Blue Lightning is that it has a really amazing soundtrack too, by the way. And this was uh, Atari's answer to Afterburner, and I think they did it well. Definitely worth picking up. Uh, You're going down. And
You're going down. In. In. I definitely feel like it could have used a little bit more color texture, but I can appreciate this. If you want a really good polygonal game on the Atari Jaguar, I recommend iWar. iWar is just so great. Hornet. Get ready to rock. Get fucked. Uh Okay, I guess, uh... Oops. Now we're gonna take a look at Brain Dead 13. Now, before we even start this, there is no hope for me when it comes to this game, or the games that are like it, like Space Ace and Dragon's Lair, but we're gonna go through all of them just for you guys, okay? I suck at these games, but they're still worth getting. I do own a copy of Brain Dead 13 that I was lucky enough to score for, like, 43 bucks on eBay. Um... And I'm proud to say it was the last game that completed my collection. But anyways, let's get into it. So far it's running just fine, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip the introduction and get right into the game. Oh, I, uh, I forgot that there was a bunch of demos down here. We'll take a look at that later. Let's get into the gameplay here. So I'm gonna spam a bunch of buttons just to kind of hopefully get away from, from this guy. Damn it! <laughs> oh my god, this is so frustrating. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. I got this, I got this. Alright. Let's go back and do it. Come on. Alright, go left, go left, go up, go up. Up, go up, go up, go up. What happened? Uh, I think I crashed. Hold on. Yeah, it looks like I crashed. Okay, so this is my first error with the emulator, uh, but it crashed. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and reset and start over. See how that goes. Resume doesn't work. Yeah, so let's go ahead and reset it and try again. I'm gonna skip all this stuff. No point going through all it again. All right, and here we go. Again. There we go. Let's go up. Come on. Come on. 
There it is. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ha <laughs> ha! Bitch. Come on. So impatient. Please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. Aha! There we go. Alright, so we're good. I wonder why it crashed though. Ayy, crap. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Alright. That's a gruesome death. Alright, I guess we're gonna move on now. Let me go ahead and turn this off. And we're gonna do Dragon's Lair next. Actually, hold on just a second. I almost forgot. Uh, we, uh, we haven't tested out the demos to see how they run. So let's go ahead and do a demo real quick. We got Dragon's Lair 1, Space Ace, and Dead, uh, Brain Dead 13, so we'll do Dragon's Lair 2. Why not? Dragon's Lair. Time Warp. Kidnapped? Oh, Daddy! Idiot! <laughs> Spirited away to a wrinkling time by the evil wizard Mordrock. Okay, to marry so the audio and the Mordrock demos are skipping just a little bit. Save her. I never be kidnapped! Mordy's gone! Transported by a bumbling old time machine, Dirk begins the rescue mission. Mine! Do it for the children. Once the casket of doom has opened, Mordrock will place the death ring upon Daphne's finger in marriage, and she will be lost forever. In the time warp. All right, so this is a sound bite that I've taken after testing out the the demo. So the audio skipping actually goes away when I close out of my screen recorder. So that's worth noting. So we're going to go ahead and go straight into Dragon's Lair and uh, give this a proper go. Uh, I went ahead and I've shut off some background programs, so this should run a lot smoother than, uh, than the demo did. A fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Again, I suck at this game, so here we go. And again, we are also, we are also running off of uh, real Atari VCS hardware. Uh, oh god, here we go. Okay. Alright. Uh, I think it's C that's my sword. Yep, yep. Ah, fuck! Should probably bleep that out. <laughs> At least I have four lives left. Alright, 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 I got this, I got this. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Shink! Up, 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 up. There we go. Alright. Uh... Okay, okay. Uh... That's right, I'm supposed to go to the right, not back. Okay. Alright, free lives. Here we go. Man, if I played this back in the 80s or on an arcade cabinet, I would be so out of quarters. <laughs> I, I, wow. Alright. It really comes down to memory at this point, so here we go. Well, I guess and timing, too. Alright. Go right, go right, go right, go right. Um, there we go. What I... Oh, okay, I thought I died for a second. Alright. Shink. I appreciate that they highlight the textures in the background so you know which way to go. Oh, come on! I just got hentied. Uh... Okay, I probably shouldn't have said that, either. <laughs> but yeah, I just got- I just got, uh... Got killed by an octopus of some sort. Alright. All right. Up. Right. Down. Sword. What? Come on. Alright. I can do this. I can do this. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright. Sword. Up. Right. Down. Sword. Oh, come on! What, what did I do wrong? Alright. Aw, oh, man! Alright. Alright, I gotta move on to the next one. So we're gonna check out uh, an unlicensed game that was released called uh, Frog Feast, which is a piggyback off of the 2600 title. And uh, this is made by Raster Soft. So, really this is very simple. All you're doing is it's a one-two player game who can get the most flies. You jump around and you eat flies. That's, that's about it. That's all it is.
All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn this off. We're going to take a look at the next one here. We are going to take a peek at Highlander. And you know what? I realize that Highlander gets a lot of hate, and honestly, it's very well deserved. Uh, Highlander sucks on the Atari Jaguar, but the thing is, is at least we got a, a Highlander game on the Atari Jaguar. There's supposed to be two other games released, and I'm hoping to do a full video review of this title uh, in the future. But if you want to actually play through it without any problems, there is a code that you can input that will basically make you invincible and will make playing the game a lot easier. Now, this is loosely based off of the Highlander animated series. Getting into the game, obviously, you're greeted with some very uh, reminiscent graphics similar to that of Alone in the Dark or Dr. Hauser. And the control for this character, Quentin McCloud, is, is god-awful, to say the least. Um, but I can appreciate this game. The thing is, is the battle mechanics is what sucks the most. It takes roughly 30 to 40 hits to kill a guard. And let me show you exactly what happens when you engage in combat with one of these guards. We're going to go into this hut real quick. See, I'm having issues turning around, and it's really hard to land a blow because they take so much of your life, and you, you have to corner these guys or just run away from them in order to, to, to survive because when they corner you, it's over with. It's done for. There's no hope, period. Watch this. See, look. I'm trying to attack. I can't get an attack in. There we go. Okay, let's try, let's try C. Can I, can I get an uppercut in? Okay. A works. And A is just a simple jab. Nope. And I'm done for. There we go. Alright, so we're going to go back into this for a second. I'm going to try to see about... Uh, if maybe I can just avoid that altogether, I'm going to actually play the game this time. So you see that guy that's coming towards me right now? The one in the very back? As long as you are far enough away from these guys, they will stop following you. But they are everywhere. You can corner them on every slide just about. And then there's also the positioning of the camera that makes it difficult. And so the load times are also relatively slow. Now, it's not terrible, but... I mean, there's there's something to be appreciative about when it comes to this game, especially when it comes to the environment and the graphics. I'm trying to... Uh, well, yep, now I'm done for. There's no way. As soon as two of them are on you, might as well call it game over. Because when there's two of them on you, they simultaneously hit you. They have like a two-second window to where you can make a hit, and you take exactly two seconds to land a hit. So as a result, they are in an interval of one second each, meaning that you don't get a single hit in. And that's it. Game over. That's it. Done. Now keep in mind, I grew up on Highlander, right? So seeing this game is a bit of an insult. Um, they could have done so much better, but I digress. The fact of the matter is, I own it, I have it, and there is in some places some level of charm that can be appreciated. Although, I will say this. I appreciate the archaic 3D graphics. Look at this. Look at this ending. And thus passed away Quentin MacLeod. And with him went the hopes and dreams of the Jetters, and the last chance for the salvation of the human race. Although I suppose we could always wait seven centuries for another immortal to be born. <laughs> this guy's such an asshole. To this day, nobody has beaten the game or done a full walkthrough of this video game. 
and I'm going to do one eventually, and I promise you, I'm going to post the long play from beginning to end and do a 15-minute review. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get into the next game here. We're going to go to uh, Hover Strike next. Now, of course, there's two different ways to play Hover Strike, just like there is for Iron Soldier. You can get it in cartridge format, or you can get it in CD format. But I recommend the CD version of Hover Strike because it has added features not featured in the cartridge. Now, if you haven't had a chance to, to play Hover Strike, I highly recommend it. Uh, for this one, I think we're going to do Trapped Under Ice. Seems like it'll be a good one to pick. A uh, giant underground floater factory has been discovered in the city region of the planet. Knock out all four entrances to the factory and their ships and weapons. Alright. So here we are, we're in the game now. And uh, basically, we just got to find these uh, these openings in the ground, these bunkers, and shoot these little enemies that are coming out of it. Uh, there should be roughly four of them. Graphics-wise, uh, Hover Strike is pretty good. It's pretty solid. I mean, it's it's a tank shooter, but there's multiple levels here that are loaded with shoot 'em up fun. Um, however, I don't really like the way that the the tank itself controls. The tank it feels too loose in many ways, and then once you start going over hills, you'll notice like right here where the screen is just kind of like wobbly and and unstable. Um, if I want to recommend to you a tank shooter on the Atari Jaguar, just stick with iWar. I think iWar is great, it's got a general aesthetic, the music is very solid, and I just love the way that the game plays, looks, and feels. It is definitely one of my top three if I had to pick top three on the Atari Jaguar. Now, if, if you're noticing that the audio is skipping on Hover Strike for a big PMU, uh, in this video that is, uh, just know that I did go back and test, and the music runs perfectly fine when I'm not screen recording. Because I'm screen recording right now, there's some minor lag within the, uh, the sound bites. But otherwise, it's perfect. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at Iron Soldier 2. Now again, there's two versions, cartridge and CD, and you'll notice that I have two versions here. That's because one of the files is broken. Um, and the other one that you're going to want to try to find is the one from Songbird. I would encourage you to purchase it first, because this is an active seller for Iron Soldier. Anyways, Iron Soldier is a series for the Atari Jaguar and the Nuon system, and is honestly worth picking up, both 1 and 2. I do want to get my hands on a Nuon system at some particular point, so that way I can enjoy Iron Soldier 3, and yes, I know I can get it on PlayStation, but I want to be able to play Iron Soldier 3 as it was intended, and that's on the Nuon system. Now, getting into the game, you've got multiple weapons that you can unlock along the way, but you get you start off with Chainsaw, Grenade, and of course, you know, your rifle. So getting into the gameplay here, this is exactly what it looks like. You see through the eyes of the mech unit. You can crush buildings, blow buildings up, you can shoot tanks, helicopters, and other mech units that aim to destroy you. But ultimately, with Iron Soldier 2, my goal here is to try to put as many sprites on the screen as I possibly can, and to see if it will crash big PMU. So, give me a second while I mess around a little bit, and then we'll see what happens. I mean, so far, it's handling up pretty nicely, so good job on you, Rich. You did a great job. And now I'm going to go ahead and start blowing stuff up and see what happens. Interesting. I can't seem to change back to my original weapon. Uh, give me a second, guys. Uh, 
Ah, oh, there it is. I had to uh, mess with the right thumbstick and hold my trigger down in order for it to work. Well, everything seems to be working just fine on that one, so I guess we're going to go ahead and turn this off, and we'll go ahead and load the next game here. We're going to take a look at Mist. Now, Mist is iconic. Mist is on everything. And uh, there's a whole series for it, but the, the original Mist is the only one that's on the Atari Jaguar. Riven and its several other sequels are still PC and on other platforms. But if you have a Jaguar CD, or if you're going to emulate Jaguar CD, I think this happens to be one of the best ports available. Let's go ahead and see what uh, what it looks like on here. I also want to take a second to mention that uh, if you guys are after homebrews, Orion Soft did a did some games that were inspired by Mist called Elensar and Philia. And for the record, those games are absolutely wonderful. I'm still trying to find physical copies for my Atari Jaguar, um, and they're very hard to find. I don't think he makes them anymore. But you can download them on Android and on PC. I do not have a download key, which is why I'm not emulating them through Big PMU. Uh, I would encourage you guys, please go purchase them before you use someone else's work that is still in publication. Go purchase the games. Shout out to Orionsoft. You are awesome, and I love your games. Just gonna just poke around here for a little bit. Uh, Mist is pretty good. I happen to have a mild obsession with point-and-click adventure games. Um, in fact, I recently played one on the 3DO called, uh, Lost Eden, and if you haven't played Lost Eden, oh my god, I love this story. I did not put it down from the moment I started it. I played through 12 hours of gameplay and beat it in a single day. It was worth every minute of it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and check out our next game here. Uh, I'm going to look into... Sp nope, wait, hold on, I forgot one. Primal Rage. We're going to check out Primal Rage uh, for this one. And this is actually one of the best ports uh, of this game from the arcade port itself. And that's only on the Atari Jaguar. Now, I remember when I picked up this game, this game was like $400 whenever I tried to find it. Obviously, you got multiple languages here, but I speak the English, so we're going to go to English. And I'm going to pick out my boy, Vertigo. Let's see. There he is. Let's go. First blood. Rage. Rage. Alright. See, I like Vertigo because he's got a really long neck. Even though he's got a really long neck, though, I mean, hitbox and hit detection is all about the same for each character. I think the only one that has kind of like the upper hand, ultimately, besides Diablo, is uh, uh, Armadon. Because he's got a lot of power behind him. And it shows not just with, his, with uh, the design of his character. Come on. To my tail. I love Primal Rage, by the way. I love it so much that I even have a copy of it for the Tiger R Zone. Now that's 
That's interesting, to be honest with you. To see a- it's basically a demake, if anything. Dude, come on. Just spamming some buttons here. In a second here, I'm going to switch over to my other boy, uh, Blizzard. Love Blizzard, he's awesome. You know, ironically enough, I did an interview recently with BJ West, and he was telling me about how he had a dinosaur fighter that was planned, uh, literally a year before the idea of porting this to the Jaguar was, was even conceived. It's a shame that, that, uh, Atari never picked up that idea. I and mean, maybe they didn't pick up that idea because this was around, you know? For a brief moment there, I forgot he had a, you know, I had to finish him. But yeah, anyways, so this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and test out... Sorry, I'm a little sidetracked here. I'm going to go ahead and restart this because I want to switch over to Blizzard instead of doing a full playthrough of this. So give me just one second. Here we go. Where is my boy? There he is. Oh, that's dirty. What? I gotta fight my I gotta fight as one of my favorite characters against my other favorite character. That's 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 tough. Alright, here we go. Get some combos in here if I can. Ha! Almost got him too. Dude, I am I am getting fucked right now. With that, uh, acid spit. Combo. Let's see if I can spam a 15% combo. Gotta hit him with the elbow drop. <sighs> Damn it. I was right there, too. It's alright, because I'm back with a vengeance. Sorry, I, uh, I like this game. Come on, let me combo you. Yes. Damn it. Thought I had it. Eleven percent. I'll take it. Suck it. Yeah. Are you guys ready for the most anticlimactic finisher ever? Here we go. Boom. Blizzard conquers. Alright, so it's time to switch over now to Space Ace, the only other animated FMV game available on the Atari Jaguar. Made by ReadySoft in Epicenter. Alright. So again, I, I suck at these games, so forewarned. Don't have time for cinematics. Let's get right into the gameplay here. I got five lives. Alright, let's try that again. Four lives. Come on. Oh, come on. Alright, 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 right. okay. Uh, clearly I am doing something wrong here. Let me try again. It's not A, it's not B, it's not C. Up? Is it up? Let me try up. There's more ship. Come on. Left, and up, and up. Oh, come on, man! Come on. Alright, hold on a second. I may have to try this a different time. If you guys have already tested this out, let me know. Because, uh, clearly I don't know what I'm doing. And that's game over. Alright, alright. Um, we're gonna move on to the next one. 
All right, now saving the best one for last. I realize that's subjective. Now again, I have to reiterate here, there's three different versions here, and there's a reason why. So some of these uh, games that were stripped and, and created were broken, and the way to tell whether it's going to work or not, as you can see, does not appear to be an active file. The way to tell if it's working or not is whenever you hover, if it doesn't give you a text in the top right corner, you know, just like uh, this one right here for Songbird, then it's it's not it's not going to work. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. World Tour Racing is the only racing game on the Jaguar CD, and I really appreciate the archaic graphics for the cinematics here, especially with the cars in the background and the fact that they use the body template for the intro to convey their logo and everything. Uh, it's it's a very self-aware intro, and I'm I'm here for it. Now, um, this is going to feel a little bit different to me, so I don't know how well I'm going to do. But World Tour Racing is just great. I recommend it. The music is wonderful. The cinematics are wonderful. Just check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward here, see about starting a race, show some gameplay, show how it handles. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some options here real quick. So you can actually choose whether you want it to be uh, automatic or manual, so if you're into that. And you can change the length of the race. Uh, three laps is good enough for me. Some people who are big fans of F1 racers might want to do 15 laps, but that's just too much for me, in my opinion. And you have 16 beautiful tracks that you can race on, too, so that's great. Good old racing in the USA. Nothing screams America like NASCAR. Anyway, just look at this, man. This this looks great. Here, let me, uh, how do I zoom out of my camera? There we go. That's how you change your perspective. Okay, that's a little too far. Right. Oop, shit. All right. I guess I should probably get to racing. Okay, I'll just settle for this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, here we go. All right. I appreciate the decals like the Atari logo, the Jaguar logo, and the Doom logo that's on here. I just, it's, this whole thing screams late Atari. It almost feels kind of like if Atari and Sega had a child, this would be it. I cannot stress to you guys enough how much I love this. The textures, the graphics, the music, the gameplay. That controls could be a little bit tighter, but, you know, also it comes down to the fact that it's hard to gauge when a turn is coming. And you can pay attention to the map all you want, but, you know, sometimes it's it's not always perfect. So it takes some time to get used to. Your car does acquire damage along the way as well. Um, but you can stop in at a pit stop, and obviously that would fix your problems, but sometimes it's hard to overtake the enemy whenever you hit a pit stop. So it's better to play it safe as much as you can. Because best believe the computers are going to damage themselves before you damage yourself. Play it safe, but go as fast as you can along the way. <laughs> 